Hello, everyone. This is a no-damage run of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. A no commentary version of this run can be found in the pinned comment in the comments section below. So starting off is the uh, foe ending scene from uh, Castlevania Dracula X. I'm just going to farm up 40 hearts here so that we can Hydro Storm Dracula to death whenever we meet him. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. Have at you. Yeah, in case you're wondering, that actually is the voice actor for Chris Redfield. <laughs> So we'll open this fight with a Hydro Storm, then whip Dracula a couple of times. Throw a couple of Holy Waters in this cycle. Maybe one more Hydro Storm for a victory pose. So because there's no voice acting in uh, this cutscene in this version, I'll uh, get on to the objectives. So the objective behind this is I'm not going to collect all of the map pieces, like fill out the entire map. I'm just going to get all the relics and beat all the bosses and save Richter. So that's really my main goal. True 100% would take like an additional three hours on top of this. And uh, if you're following along with this video, then that's something that is completely up to your discretion. You'd probably be scrubbing forever looking for all the hidden areas anyway, so I would just recommend that you go find a map and do it yourself. Because I know I sure didn't want to. But yeah, there are a lot of uh, similar voice actors. Or this game shares voice actors rather with other... <clears throat> Excuse me. This game shares voice actors with other games. I think Dracula was also Dio Brando in like older JoJo's Bizarre Adventure cartoons. And he was also Harry Mason from Silent Hill. I think I may wind up doing Dracula X after this. I don't know. I'm recording this like six days, eight days actually out from the release of uh, 
yet another re-release of this game. It's going to be a port of the PSP version, which obviously is not as good. By the way, I'm playing on a uh, quality hack version of this game. Which is supposed to make some things look better, which is why that uh, hole down there is open. It's an area that's... It's an unused area that's, like, kind of in the game's data as, like, kind of a placeholder for all the Sega Saturn content. But anyway, moving right along. So whenever the uh, lights turn on, that's when we're going to stop shield dashing so that we can actually hit the zombies when they come up. You know, just kind of tap forward on the D-pad little by little. The Alucard Sword will kill everything in one hit, leading up to death, so it's whatever. There's no zombies in this room, so... Could shield dash. You can shield dash by alternating between the back dash button and the shield button, and you move signif significantly faster. Ah, Alucard. What is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. What? <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, PS1 era reverb on all the bad guys' voices. I actually don't know if that's like present in the Saturn version or not. I haven't really played the Saturn version in very much. But anyways, so I'm also doing this without glitches. So we're not doing death skip in order to uh, keep all of the Alucard equipment. Because I feel like that would that would have made this way too easy. Even though it does get pretty easy pretty early. So, uh... The thing that I'm using to throw fireballs, um... I'm just hitting, uh, back, up, and down. And, uh, Alucard will shoot out a fireball. So it's like... Right... I'm actually trying to bait this guy out, the skeleton over here. This guy throws a lot of bones. Gotta close the distance as quickly as possible. Because... Otherwise, he can, uh, he can just snipe you from very far away. But yeah, back, up, down is the shortcut. I think that, uh... I think that all of the, uh, button inputs for all of, like, the weird fighting game type moves, like all the spells and stuff, is all uh, based on like animations. But anyway, I'm gonna jump over here, grab the uh, leather shield so that we can equip that not only to block projectiles, because that's what shields are good for in this game, but also to uh, be able to shield dash again. I'm trying to do uh, Tetris Spirit, which is uh, hold up and then do quarter circle forward and attack, but uh, the inputs are very difficult. I'm actually not very sure of the timing on this, which is why I'm taking forever. So I just gave up and uh, decided to do just one fireball. I actually didn't even need to do Tetris Spirit, so that was just a waste of time. I did this whole thing with saves, by the way. As I do every time I try to clear a game for no damage the first time. I'm trying to learn how to do it. So the first uh, life up, I do collect all of the uh, life and heart upgrades. Is uh, in the hidden rooms down and to the left. In the first tower. The second tower over here. Uh... I summon a uh, fireball from off screen and hopefully it hits that guy, but uh, it didn't. Luckily I was able to jump out of the way.
I'm just staying low, trying to avoid axes. I don't think there's uh, I don't think there's any real way to manipulate whether they throw an upper axe or a lower axe. So it just kind of varies, and you just have to kind of uh, accommodate for it. I'm trying to farm up as many hearts as possible. Got to keep the knife because that is what I'm going to use for my uh, Slogra and Gaibon strat. So this is part two. Uh, usually I save whenever I'm uh, in a new area about to fight a boss, so maybe it's like a save every 10 minutes or so. So while I'd been figuring out the route for this, I'd been stopping looking at the map and stuff. If I go back to doing uh, no damage for this game again, then it's uh, probably not going to be all relics. It's going to be like all bosses. Still glitchless though. Alright, so as long as we don't scroll the screen too far to the right, we're able to uh, have plenty of time to buffer out our uh, Tetra Spirit and then kill Slogra. And then when Gaibon goes to the ground here and he's about to turn red, he's not invincible. So we can just... Uh, We can just spam knives and just kick the shit out of them. And there's the next life map. Life max, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so I switched uh, controllers a couple of times, actually. I did the first segment with a fight stick, wondering if actually that would help me with the, uh, with all the input combinations, but, uh, I'm really bad at using fight sticks. It's like logic would dictate, well, those are fighting game maneuvers. If they're fighting game maneuvers, then, uh... Will it actually work out better to use a fight stick? And it might, but... My fine control over fight sticks is, uh... Leaves a lot to be desired. Especially with a square gate, because I usually ride the gate whenever I use a fight stick. So these guys, uh... Just try to stay as far away from them as possible and use a single spirit, just back up and down. Try and hold on to my, uh... Just try and farm hearts whenever I can. This guy was being a bit of a troll, so I decided to just kind of hang back and knife him. Probably gonna just do the same for these guys, I think. Except the uh, skeleton there. So the idea here is to try to farm up as many hearts as possible so that we can use the stopwatch. The stopwatch is pretty indispensable throughout the course of this. So I'm just kind of trying to keep my distance. You'll notice that I switch between using my fists and using the sword a lot. Uh, that's for certain enemies. Because if you can get close, then you can actually have uh, the uh, hurt box on, like the two frames of uh, damage on Alucard's fist actually do multiple hits to enemies. So Alucard's like default fists are actually very strong. 
I think they're probably the fastest weapon in the game. Well, next to the Jewel Knuckle, anyway. But uh, for situations where you actually need uh, distance, you can equip a sword, like a little bit of distance. Otherwise, just using your fists is going to deal a lot of damage very quickly. Wait a moment. You seem human, and yet, what do you hear? I've come to destroy this castle. Then we have the same purpose. I'll trust you for now. I'm Maria. Who are you? Alucard. Not the talkative type, I can see. Well, perhaps we'll meet again. If you live that long. Farewell. So over here, uh, just trying to max out on hearts here. I think at this point should have uh, 88. No, 70. 88 is a little uh, generous there. I wasn't exactly sure where the stopwatch was because it had been a while since the last time I played. So for these Ouija boards over here, their uh, hurt boxes are a little ambiguous, so quick Tetra Spirit to take them out. Actually their hurt boxes are adjusted a little upper, this guy being a jerk. Oh man, I didn't even notice that bone going through the floor there. Could have actually been screwed. All right, so there's our uh, there's our stopwatch, which is actually going to come in handy with a lot of these uh, with a lot of these guys shooting projectiles. Against my better judgment, though, I was using the shield instead of the stopwatch. I should have just used the stopwatch in that room. Depending on whether an enemy has their hurt box extended while time is frozen, you could rush up to them and punch them, but those skeletons just die in one hit at this point anyway. Although, I mean, like, I, I say that they should die at this point, but uh, you can see in the video, like, I'm doing pretty little damage. And the reason for this is because I've been getting bad strength rolls. So as you level up, uh, your stats are going to scale. Not uh, not based on what you use, it's actually completely random. So if you get a bad strength roll, then you're going to do very little damage. But it's after like maybe the third or fourth segment that my strength actually starts to pick back up. So for these guys, just uh, keeping distance. Um, I don't actually know what her name is because I uh, don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, fairy scroll at this point. I think it's the fairy scroll that tells you uh, what their attacks or what their names are. I forget what this one's name is. So I'm just like kind of hanging back and uh, occasionally my fireballs are going to hit her projectiles because they go for the nearest thing that has an HP value, whether it's a candle or whether it's a projectile or whether it's an enemy. These fireballs don't discriminate, so they're a little inaccurate sometimes. Also not every enemy is uh, going to be affected by the stopwatch. These uh, stone flowers are one of them, so I'm just kind of taking these guys a little slow, biding my time. And my current level of strength is taking four hits to kill them. So, uh, I should have probably used fireballs here instead.
Ooh, I almost walked out of here without the stopwatch. That would have actually made the uh, doppelganger fight a lot worse. So I had to, uh, I had to get the uh, jewel knuckles here in the outer wall. Reason being, not doing enough damage, and the jewel knuckles do increase your strength stat by like 20. So yeah, by staying up here, we're able to uh, maybe shoot some fireballs and just kind of chill out back here. You could jump over these guys, but. I don't like the idea of getting hit by stray pixels. I'm not very good at jumping and platforming. So that's why I'm kind of... trying to fight these guys eye to eye instead of jumping over them. Also, both of these uh, torches over here have... Uh, have large hearts, which are about... Five hearts each, I think. I think they're five hearts or ten hearts. I don't know. I don't usually count. But I should count. I should know this. I made a mistake here. I'm supposed to not have the short sword equipped. Even so, that wasn't going to stop me from having to attack the doppelganger with two stopwatches instead of one. Normally, you could kill him in one stopwatch and be fine. But yeah, you can see what I was talking about with the uh, with the fists. I kept punching him over and over again, and I was able to do, like, two hits per punch instead of one, because the uh, hurt box starts at Alucard's elbow, and there's, like, there's, like, an extra frame of animation there. Like, an extra extended frame of animation that's sort of, uh, that's able to cheat most enemy uh, invincibility frames. So over here, I'm, uh... doing uh, the Hellfire move. I don't actually remember the input for that, because I only ever used it like once this entire run, and that was just to skip past that guy. Teleports behind you. Nothing personal, kid. Hang on one sec, let me look it up. Alright, so we're just going to kind of sit there. I don't actually know what, I uh, actually don't know what we're supposed to do, like what input there. Okay, so Hellfire is actually up in quarter circle forward. The Tetra Spirit is hold two seconds and then do a half circle down. And you can cancel the Hellfire at the very end of the animation. Like, whenever Alucard fades in, just hold down, and then you're able to cancel that animation. and keep Alucard from attacking, and it puts you in a more advantageous position to get around the enemies. Yeah, sorry I didn't actually uh, know my button combinations correctly, I just had to look that up really fast. I hope you can forgive me. It's better that I correct myself late than not at all. This commentary has been saved. Anyway. So for this section, the only enemy here that can actually really cause damage to you from a lower, or from an upper level is this uh, Spear Knight over here. So we're gonna use fireballs on him. I don't actually remember if he's immune to the stopwatch or not. I didn't wanna fuck around. And these guys, these musketeers, they only attack at one level anyway. 
So you could just sit right below and just punch them as they walk up, or you could use a summon spirit. Okay, at this Y coordinate is where the uh, Medusa heads start to spawn. So this is where we want to start being extra careful. This is also another place where stopwatch comes in handy. That Medusa head was directly in the way, so I wanted to attack him. And I think actually this is, yeah, use a stopwatch there. Oh, that was brutal. So um, whenever you're jumping from platform to platform, uh, you have about seven frames before you can no longer do a jump extend off of the platform. So it's about seven frames of grace. Um, I'm jumping too early there. There's a uh, heart max up in that urn over there. But oh no, I am determined to get that heart max up. Even though that Hellfire earlier was very risky. So uh, do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> And there we go, heart max up. Fantastic. So you could see like at the very end, like as I was dropping off of that platform, I had a little bit of a grace period where I could jump again. And it's about seven frames. This game runs at 60 frames. So that's uh, seven divided by 60 is one what of a second. Point 0.11 seconds. I went into the uh, teleporter room and back out so that the elevator would reach the top faster. Not necessarily for the sake of the elevator reaching the top faster, but uh, just because I didn't want to wait. So over here is a uh, pretty quintessential trick, especially if you are going to learn how to speedrun. You have to do a dash with the wolf. Like at the bottom of the stairs, you double tap to the left, and uh, then you jump and hold right, and you just sort of curve around and reach the platform. So I did that, and then I got the garnet. And next we're going to go to the library so that we can buy an iron shield from the librarian. Be careful past Carsey, indeed. These dull hands over here um, have a pretty generous hurt box, so I don't want to take them head on. I'm just trying to stay as far to the right as I can so that they don't aggro. Some enemies can aggro the second you see them, but. Uh, a lot of enemies, like the skeleton enemies and Dullahans, as long as they're scrolled far enough to the right or the left, they will not activate. Uh, these guys will aggro uh, depending on how soon you attack. So otherwise, they move kind of slow. So it's generally better to try to get the jump on them. I pick up uncurses here so that I can generate invincibility frames. Uncurses are pretty handy for that. Because the uh, first part of the uh, recovery or the uh, recovery spell frames, so like potions, uncurses, antidotes, and shit like that, like as long as it's a uh, as long as it's like a healing potion of some kind, like a potion type item, it generates invincibility frames, which is going to be absolutely necessary for getting the shield rod a little later. And of course these uh, 3D books over here, just kind of keeping my distance. Just aggroing one at a time and taking them out one at a time. Unless I can DPS them immediately. With the Jewel Knuckle, it takes two hits. You don't actually need crazy high shield dashing speed. It's been a long time, old one. Oh, 
It's you, Master Alucard. What do you need? I need your help. Young Master, I cannot aid one who opposes the Master. You won't go unrewarded. Really? In that case, just tell me what you need. I'm interested. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you. I'm interested in... So we're going to sell all of our jewels, then buy the Jewel of Open, and then we're going to buy three library cards, and with the remaining 4,000, we're going to buy the Iron Shield, and the Iron Shield plus Shield Rod combo is going to carry us through a lot of the game. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't farm for the Chrysagrim because that room is actually pretty dangerous. These guys move in a pretty unpredictable fashion, so don't want to piss them off. Truthfully, the shield rod is more broken than the than the Crusagrim late game, late game anyway. Excuse me, tripping over my words. It's a little cold. Just turned on the boiler, but the heat hasn't kicked in yet. So for some of these guys, uh, they will be at such a downward angle that you will not be able to hit them with your fists. In which case, this is where the Gladius comes in handy for diagonal swings downward to the right or left. I'll wait for this guy to come back. If they touch you, they will either poison you or curse you. Basically, if we attack around them, then they just take an Amy Winehouse bump of coke and suddenly go a million miles an hour. And we don't want that to happen. So right about here, just going to farm up some more hearts and uh, save the game. So as you can see, there is an obvious safe zone around the stone flowers. Just going to kind of sit right there. It's usually after the first projectile, we can just go right on in and just kind of chill out. I equip the iron shield here because it's a larger shield. 
than the leather shield. So the leather shield and the shield rod has a pretty funny animation. You just summon a cow. <laughs> I appreciate the sense of humor in this game. Now that we got the jewel knuckle, all these uh, skeletons are going to go down in one shot. Obviously, I want to hit them before they throw any projectiles. Because the less things on the screen that can hit you, the better. Because it means that your movement options are open. Especially these Fleeman. It's actually quite nice that Fleeman don't uh, activate quite so soon. And uh, so, statue over there just closed because we didn't make the clock rush fast enough. Though technically clock rush doesn't really apply because I was already taking my time. And all bosses speedrun would have finished with the game by now. So we wait. So Twitch chat, how's it going? I guess if you guys have any questions, now's the time. So after this, we exit, we re-enter, re jump, transform into the wolf, untransform, hold down an X to do a dive kick into the candle, and then we're able to get onto the ledge up above. So we're just able to completely skip going to the chapel. I do skip a couple of cutscenes as a result of this. I'm going directly to the right, though. Just taking out these guys. Because it's still pretty early on in the segment, I decided to take them out for a little bit of extra experience. Then, after this, we're going to activate the teleporter so that we can come back through here. slightly later. <laughs> Look at this fucking idiot. He can't climb the stairs. Just before he dies, he throws a little temper tantrum. <laughs> what a fucking wuss. So the stopwatch doesn't affect these guys, we can't just like jump over them. I'm gonna stay as far back as I can. He's trying to climb the stairs. He wants to climb the stairs. But he's not smart enough to attack. Of course if we get any closer, he will attack and he'll just keep attacking until he bumps us off the screen. So we're kind of cheesing his AI a little bit here. Oh, that's actually not a temper tantrum. That's actually a suicide attack. Never mind. Stay the fuck away from him when he does that. Huh. 
Because that sword that he throws can actually cause damage. And this axe guy, meanwhile, try to run after you. I don't know if this guy can chase you up the stairs or not. I don't think he can. There we go. So that's done. And now I have to go as quickly as possible onto the lower screen and then onto the upper screen. We're going to use the stopwatch so that the weapons that surround the sword lord up there do not spawn quickly enough. Because after the s weapons start to uh, circle around the sword, that's when they start having active damage frames and we want to be as far away from that sword as possible after that. Uh, we can still get around here with singular jumps. We don't need the double jump. So, the skeleton blazes over here. We gotta walk and not do anything, and they'll just jump right over us. As long as you don't do anything else, like raise your shield or attack. But once you do that, then you have to wait for them to attack before you can try to manipulate them to jump over you. This is where I will conclude this segment. So we'll open up this uh, room over here with a soul steel, and then we will try to get as close to the uh, to the knight over here as possible with the shield, and then use an uncursed potion to shield dash through the other guys, the musketeers. Then we'll use a neutron bomb to kill the musketeers, equip the sword, the shield rod, and equip the iron shield. Then use the Iron Shield plus Shield Rod spell by pressing both hand buttons at the same time. And then we just obliterate the Sword Lord and then we're able to get right by. And next is a boss fight. <laughs> Who are you? Open Hell's Gate! Come forth, my servants! The scent of your blood. You're a bellwort. Crush this flea who invades my castle! <laughs> as soon as the fight starts, we're gonna... mash the fuck out of the square and circle buttons. Try to take out the Minotaur first because the Minotaur is going to take up the most area. He's going to be the hardest to dodge. But I had a little bit of invincibility frames from the first uh, shield rod spell that I did. I'm certain that was a Belmont. So he says he's the lord of this castle. And in doing so, with the invincibility frames, I was able to dodge that attack. I probably should have gone to the chapel first, actually, so that I could get, like, the extra two cutscenes with, uh, Maria. But it completely skipped my mind to do so. So at this stage, using the shield rod, you have about eh, five charges of shield rod from a full MP meter. Once we clear this, you just jump up here, go to the save, and recover our MP instantly. There's also a glitch that sometimes you can do completely by accident called the MP refill glitch, where if you trigger a state of the game called a screen freeze, which can happen 
either by using a heart refresh, using a uh, neutron bomb, or anything that freezes enemies completely. That freezes the enemies and the cameras completely. And you do it on the same frame that your MP recovers, then you get max MP recovery. Obviously, it's something that you would do completely on accident. Got to make sure to equip the shield rod here. I think I might have been tabbed out doing something while I recorded this segment. But you want to equip the shield rod at this point as soon as possible. Otherwise, whenever you go to use the shield rod, you'll accidentally use a library card. Don't be a dumb dumb like Carsey. So the shield rod, having more distance, basically makes the uh, the Gladius pretty pointless up to this point. And here I'm trying to remember which button is Wolf Button. Gotta be able to curve around. Can we do it? Come on, we can do it. There we go. But we have to be able to use the mist right afterwards in order to be able to complete this jump. Normally you're supposed to have a uh, double jump at this point, at which point you would also use mist to close the gap here. So right about here, I'm gonna freeze time. And we're gonna use the shield rod combo. Scrolling to the left of the screen. Basically, depending on what direction you're facing, you can either scroll the screen to the right or the left in order to deal the most hits with the shield rod as possible. If that makes any sense. The most hits with the shield rod spell as possible. Case in point, you can see I'm scrolling it to the right and keeping, trying to keep the swords on the lesser demon for as long as possible. The longer the swords are on the enemy, the more damage they will do. So, you could either get a lot of DPS or screw yourself over really badly with it. But in most cases, it's going to be very beneficial for you to kill enemies as quickly as possible. And I mean, killing enemies as quickly as possible, not to be fast, not for the sake of being fast, but for safety reasons. Enemy is on screen less, fewer in opportunities for the enemy to hit you. I'm interested. <laughs> like? I'm interested in this. So we'll sell the onyx and we're gonna buy a mana prism. I probably didn't actually need this many library cards, but I got that many anyway. I bought the extra mana prism here for uh, just convenience, mostly. I don't actually use the uh, wing smash with the bat very much. Like? Farewell for now. Next relic, Fairy Card. Fairy is useful for healing Alucard. Provided you have certain fairy related items, as well as some medicine. So, like, the Fairy Apple or whatever. I don't actually remember what the item is called.
So three of these, uh, three of these books spawn here, and they are really fast. I almost got robbed. Now that we have the shield rod, these ectoplasms are a joke. So we're going to be going in and out of the library. Of course, we still have a little bit more range with the uh, shield rod. Occasionally, I still use the jewel knuckles in places where using the standard shield rod might not be favorable. So to be able to conserve MP. But now that we have the uh, now that we have the bat relic, the soul of bat. So generally, I'm going to avoid the clock tower. Uh, reason being, all the weird platforming and all of the projectiles, it's a pretty terrible section of gameplay. Especially in like the first three towers of the clock tower. So it's like, forget that. I just go up to get the fire of bat. And then we're going to go around instead in order to get the double jump. So taking the teleporter to go back to Ulrox's quarters. Take the mana prism. So we got two mana prisms now. One of which I'm actually going to use during the Ulrox fight because you actually have to use one in order to be able to generate enough invincibility frames among other things. And by other things, I mean doing damage. So generating invincibility frames and doing damage. Ah, oh, jeez. 
vocal cords are really tight right now. I'm gonna loosen up a little bit. All right. Go through there with the bat or the wolf. We needed the bat or the gravity boots to be able to get up here to begin with. I think Ulrox starts taking damage immediately. So used a uh, mana prism there because we were not going to have enough MP to be able to continue our attack. About the only thing that can actually hurt you in this fight is whenever he does like his laser beam attack. You have to kind of jump over the explosion afterwards. About as threatening as Reptile in Mortal Kombat. He could very well be Reptile's cousin. Ulrox can actually softlock the game with his death animation and continue exploding forever and not opening doors. How could that happen? Strength level the bloody zombies are gonna die in one shot now. Oh, just a random bit of trivia. Oh, thank you, Talek Zealot. So, jumping over here, the uh, hitbox of the hidden wall is extended downward just far enough for us to be able to keep hitting it. Chapel is one such area where using the stopwatch is going to come in handy. Especially if we're getting rid of some of these birds over here, because birds are jerks. Birds are always jerks. Could actually use uh, Shield Rod spell here, probably be a lot safer. Especially for these bone halberds. Unfortunately, I hit that candle there and spawned that Bible. Mostly I'm going to pick up the leap stone or the double jump for convenience sake. Hippogriff over here is one of Maria's familiars, but you only see a cutscene with Maria afterwards. If you triggered Maria's appearance at the bottom of the chapel. I should have actually thought about doing that. Thank you. 
Just gotta space these guys out. I don't really have any uh, particular tips for how to do that. Just try to stay away and uh, look for openings with which to be able to attack. That's Castlevania in a nutshell. It's probably why I like this so much, because it's probably the most combat-heavy 2D platformer that I've ever played. And I'm a sucker for good combat. Avoiding the gym there. The Ricochet Gym. It's not as bad as the uh, Holy Ash or whatever it's called. Looks like you're sprinkling, sprinkling a little bit of crack in front of your enemies. Just gonna slowly wait for this. I'm gonna save the game. You could actually end the game here if you wanted to. By killing Richter. Anyway, so there's a lot of these over here. It's pretty handy. Also picked up another familiar. also pick up the uh, Holy Cross over here, which actually does quite a bit of damage. Not as much as the uh, Shield Rod and Sword combo, or Shield Rod and Iron Shield combo, mind. So it's actually not quite as favorable to pick up the cross, especially when you should probably be abusing the fuck out of the stopwatch where you can. After getting the leap stone, I just want to get the hell out of here because there are a lot of these flea riders and I do not want to get caught in the middle of them. Because I think right about here, I'm, uh, Bit of a tight budget for her hearts. I'll go in here and uh, trigger the teleporter. Then go beat Karasuman.
Obviously, what a wuss. Part of me wishes that boss had more HP so you actually, like, I don't know, get to fight him. There's healing mail in the secret cubby hole over here. So you could walk around and heal yourself if you were low on health. But if you're losing that much health that you have to walk around to heal yourself, then you should probably be practicing fighting instead. So sword lords in here, whenever you beat them, they transform into vandal swords. So you have to fight two enemies instead of one every time you beat one. This room over here, triggering the stopwatch as much as humanly possible. I didn't find a very easy place to farm hearts, which is why we're on a tight budget here for this. I'm just trying to spam the stopwatch as much as, much as possible. I'm going to beat this uh, cloaked knight over here. Collect these power-ups, and uh, then we're going to leave the clock tower and never come back for the duration of the normal castle. And of course, I'm not backtracking through all of that just to go back to the teleporter. I'd rather go back to the library and go to a much safer teleporter at the cost of maybe an extra minute or so. At this point, trying to beat these guys is diminishing returns. I mostly just beat the spell books so that I can get them out of the way. Because with the Leap Stone, you can just get around everything, pretty much. Gonna teleport three times here to get to the horse teleporter. And then go back to the castle's entrance so that we can start to get wolf relics. The reason why I wanna get wolf relics and not really use bat relics 
It could be argued that Wing Smashing is going to be safer, but I don't really trust my ability to make circular inputs with the PlayStation pad or the 360 pad. So for the purpose of no damage, I'm just doing Wolf Relics. Because you gain invincibility frames immediately. Sure is taking me a minute to start this segment. Any day now, past Carsey. There you go. So right about here, uh, I actually did use some wing smashes, but you can see how horribly inefficient I am at using wing smashes. At the end of a wing smash, you can actually transform into mist and then transform back into a bat. I was lucky a zombie didn't get me when I hit the ground there. Stay as far to the right as possible so the uh, Owl Knight does not activate. Now we got the Power of Wolf, and we got a Life Max. Just go right over here and quarter circle forward run, or double tap to the right run actually. Now we go in at supersonic speed. Sonic Doggo. Going to the right here. It's another health max. Then we're going back into the alchemy lab for just a moment. So to pick up more relics. Once again. There's this guy, but we have a stopwatch. I think I despawned his bones somewhere along the way. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Actually, I should have gotten hit there. But I was actually unaware that I despawned his bone until I just saw this video. Huh. get up into Slogra and Gaibon's room. The bat card is in here. The bat is actually probably the strongest familiar in the game, but generally I don't like to let familiars attack for me. 
because there are some occasions where I do not want familiars to attack for me, such as with the balloon pods in the reverse castle. I had a demon, or I had the demon attack a balloon pod when I didn't want it to. And it just scattered balloon jizz everywhere. How does that movement work on controller? It's called shield dashing. I'm hitting triangle and circle repeatedly over and over again and alternating between the two. The shield animation cancels the back dash animation and vice versa. So the faster you do it, you can do it pretty fast, but it's really more about consistency than actual, actually building up speed. There is a speed cap on it, and that's the max speed of the back dash. So now that we're back in the marble gallery, I'm gonna go down this way to get the spirit orb. And now we can actually see damage values. I actually probably should have gotten the uh, spirit orb pretty early on. Ooh, I almost, I almost took damage there. I have no idea what was up with my fine control of the character from this point, but it was bad. Sometimes when you get to using too many regular attacks, you often forget what you have at your disposal. I could have just shield rotted these marionettes over here, but I guess I didn't really need to. commentary has been going on for an hour 17. I need to stretch. So now that we're back here, pick up on a relic that I missed earlier. You can also use the stopwatch to open this area to the right. Pick up the heart max up, the yellow cart mail and the yellow cart sword and the yellow cart shield. Of which there really is no point. It's all fake. use the bat to go up the center here. And then pick up the gravity boots. And now we don't need to wait to go up anymore. As long as we got a ceiling that is not going to hurt us. Just gonna sonic doggo our way over to the caverns now pretty roundabout path I'm taking. Once again, stopwatch in order to mitigate these guys from throwing projectiles. idea what I did there. I just completely forgot that I had a stopwatch. Just 
just kind of used the uh, shield rod spell there because I could. Got to be careful with these guys. The spear guards. Also, those arrows can uh, hurt you if you walk up too close. So don't do what I did. It's actually better to use the uh, bat to fly over these guys. But I'm pretty sure I didn't even think about that until like later. <laughs> also, that <laughs> that skeleton archer just jumped off the screen. Apparently, you can make him do that. I don't even know what I was doing. Not using the stopwatch, apparently. And doing things the hard way. Man, hindsight is 2020. Also got the power of mist, which allows you to fly around in mist form for a little bit. <laughs> then we're going to save the game here and go fight Succubus. I forgot to turn off my scanline generator. Oops. I remember this. Totally forgot that I had the scanline generator on on my OSSC. Oh well. Mother! That voice! Alucard, it's you! I'm coming, Mother! I'll save you! No, Alucard! Don't come here! But, Mother! It's all right. If my death can save others, I gladly surrender my life. Mother, no! Please, no! Yes, Alucard. Watch me die and remember always my last words to you. Yes, Mother. You must despise humans. They are to be your prey. What? Better for them to die than to let them compound their sins. Begin by slaying that one over there. No, it wasn't like this. What's wrong? Alucard. My mother never said such a thing. What do you mean? Kill them and bring them happiness! No! You're not my mother! What kind of demon are you? <laughs> you broke free of my spell! I like that! Demon! Death is too good for you! Come here, little boy, and show me what you've got. All right, half-naked bondage lady. That's exactly what we've got. Darkling, I smell your blood. You're a vampire? Could it be... That strength, that beauty. You're the son of Lord Dracula. Death in the dream world will set your soul wandering for eternity, demon. Wait!
That was probably the most suggestive death rattle I have ever heard. Any in. We're going to equip the Moonstone here. That uh, gives us an additional 5 to all of our stats. And is a generally good thing to have equipped throughout the game. I could have actually done Wolf Relic there, probably. So this right here is a pretty long segment, too. Uh... Gonna go up here to collect one more relic. Also, there's a magic missile. Why did I collect that? I don't know. Probably so that I would read the word magic missile in commentary. Past Carsey is such a troll. Moonstone only gives you a stat boost at nighttime according to the big clock on the castle. One minute IGT corresponds to an hour. Sunstone gives stats during the day. I did not know that. Thank you, Talix Zealot. That is the world record holder in my chat, who is uh, kindly pointing out things that I actually did not know previously. So at this stage, uh, jumping into the water can hurt you. Which is why I'm being like extra careful and not like using the wolf relic to dash through just everything. By using the wolf relic, we could dash through that, like, I don't know, two, three rooms previously. And, uh, it costs a little bit of MP every time you dash through. So, like, water itself, you can touch water and it won't hurt you. But once the water crosses over to a specific point on Alucard's hitbox, it'll start doing maybe, like, two, three damage per second or so. It ticks down, like, one point every third of a second. So obviously you're going nowhere if you jump in the water. I'll take you to a place which might be interesting for you. <laughs> This is actually one spot where jewel knuckles come in handy. Mostly because I want to be able to have as many damage frames in front of Alucard as possible for these bats. Also, stay towards the front of the boat, because if you're in the back of the boat, when the boat drops into the waterfall there, then you'll take damage. So just generally crouching and punching in front of you is going to get rid of all the bats. The Merman statue doesn't allow us to go underwater. Instead, it just teleports the uh, ferryman over to the other side of the cavern for some reason. But we need the Merman statue in order to get the holy symbol. In all actuality, just a snorkel, but snorkels probably weren't even invented in 1760s Transylvania.
Going back over here to farm some more hearts. Just sliding down and uh, jumping up with the leap stone. We don't need no stinking platform, we got our own. If I went any deeper, I would have taken damage. So unbeknownst to me, this early on in the game, using the gravity boots actually eats some of your MP. Also, I saved myself very narrowly there because I went wolf relic too early. I must have been really hungry. You can see that every time you hit an enemy while you're in wolf form, it takes more of your MP every time to be able to pass through enemies. make a decision. Do I go down or do I go right? I'm so lucky that I dropped down before the active damage frames on those icicles started. I'll guide you to meet your destiny. These creepy dudes and their nervous laughter. Remain completely crouched through this. Just pass right through. Does absorb damage count as damage? I was actually going for hitless in this particular run. Oh yeah, by the way, I uh, still had not fixed the uh, scan lines being on in this segment, so if you're wondering why it suddenly looks like shit, please go full screen. It would take me forever to explain scan lines. Just go full screen, trust me. It'll fix it. So now that we have the holy symbol, we are able to go underwater and collect more power-ups. Actually, a very good reason for me to go and pick up the holy symbol first was for after the next boss in this area, the water level rises. And it rises to a point that you would take damage if you're not fast enough. And I didn't want to lose my progress up to this point to something so stupid, so... Thank <laughs> you. 
Quick shield rod spell to get rid of the Scylla worm. Then we're gonna go fight Scylla. It's because Alucard's a vampire. He can't do running water very well. And that's all we gotta do. One shield rod spell. We Gucci. Now that we're done collecting pretty much everything here, well, almost done collecting everything here, we're going to make our way over to the catacombs next. I like to freeze time on the toads here, because I really don't like these guys. They are quite difficult to hit if you cannot predict where they are going to land, and even tougher to hit if you cannot predict where they are going to attack. I think the smaller frogs have longer tongues too. By the way, if you're playing the Xbox 360 version, uh, the frogs can like jump around and sometimes just leave their hitboxes places. So sometimes you'll just randomly take damage because of the frogs in the room. It is a Xbox 360 specific glitch. I use the stopwatch there in order to keep the fish heads from shooting fireballs. Dash through these guys going this way in order to pick up Another health power up here. Then we're gonna super jump upwards. Oh yeah, by the way, there's a pair of boots behind the waterfall here that if you equip them, it actually does raise Alucard's height by one pixel. They're called the secret boots. They're supposed to make you look taller than they are. And it literally does raise Alucard's height by like one pixel. We'll use the stopwatch again to uh, go forward as quickly as possible and eliminate these frogs. The little one is going to come this way. We're going to stopwatch again. We're going to get rid of them. Now all that's left is us and Donkey Kong over here with the exploding barrel. And he's going to throw... save the game here now. I just wanted to check all these candles because not very many of my attempts actually got this far.
So once the once we load up for the next segment. We're going to just keep going back and forth. Firm up max hearts. Because we are going to be abusing the stopwatch a lot in the catacombs. Also, we're not going to be blocked in unless we go too far forward. I'm just going to go back outside, save, and come back in. So if you've gotten to this point and you're wondering why I am using saves, the answer is because I didn't want to do it all in one take. I'm truthfully not all that familiar with Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And I readily admit this. Most of the times I do no damage runs, it's mostly so that I can explore the game's mechanics. That is to say, I'm probably going to return to this game at some point and do more stuff. Hey, there we go. Look at that. I finally turned off the scan lines. Go past Carsey, go! If it looks like I'm collecting hearts because I got max hearts, it's because I was checking the candles. So once we use the spell, we're just going to crouch, like, immediately. And, uh, while he's going backwards, we're just going to exploit that. As the swords go further right, so will Cerberus, and he will just take more damage. And then he goes down in like two, three shield rod spells. Freeze time here. It's actually a good time for jewel knuckles, but... Sometimes if enemies just take too long to beat, but they don't move that fast, sometimes it's faster to just like move around them. So the gremlins here, or uh, Uko Box. I'm just gonna use the uh, shield rod spell to get around them. And once we've run out of MP here, we're just gonna go back to using the stopwatch again. Jump left. Freeze. Well, actually, not freeze quite so soon because that Salem Witch is directly in the way. And I had to get the drop on her before she aggroed. Same here. And the reason I go up here, the reason I uh, equip the demon card here and I go up here, is so that I can get the Ring of Ares. Switch. Why don't I press it and see? You actually need a lot of MP for this. I should have actually probably been using the stopwatch a little sooner. But once you fly over all these Allura Unes and whatnot, get the Ring of Ares. <coughs> it's 
excuse me. I just equipped the crystal croak. Crystal cloak, not crystal croak. Getting my L's and R's mixed up. I'm just gonna kind of slowly fly over these guys. If you're good at chaining wing smashes, obviously you can just go right through them. But I myself am not. be using the stopwatch very heavily here at this point. Yeah, that red jelly leaped pretty high. But those enemies are pretty easy to dodge. Anyway, so we have to use the echo of that, which we got earlier. in order to run through this spike pit, which is uh, probably one of the more dangerous sections of the run. I actually uh, game overed a few times here. Because once you get caught in the spikes, if you can't transform back into the bat quickly enough, and you can see that I was like really low on MP, then you'll just get demolished by spikes, just wombo comboed back and forth. Trying to get rid of these uh, wear skeletons as quickly as possible. Equipping the Ring of Ares here will actually assist with that quite greatly. Because without the Ring of Ares, it'll take two hits from the Shield Rod to kill these guys instead of one. I'm just using the Shield Rod here because I'm low on MP. And the Shield Rod here has like the best range and, you know, you can actually get in at least one attack. before the wear skeletons attack. Then we're going to equip the spike breaker here. Spikebreaker is uh, the only armor you would need for a no damage run because it allows you to break spikes and it doesn't cause any damage. I actually don't know if there are any similar armors that just completely nullify any type of uh, any type of damage. I think some of them actually like absorb. So I do quarter circle forward, wolf dash, and then on this screen here, once I start to see the uh, red skeletons here, I jump so that whenever I land, I land in this room, and I don't uh, accidentally bonk a wall and transform back into regular Alucard. Then we're going to use a mana potion and turn back into wolf form, quarter circle forward dash. I do quarter circle forward there because it takes the least amount of time for Alucard to reach full speed and also gain invincibility frames. Which is fine because this section's kind of a pain in the ass. And then when we return here, we're going to use the stopwatch. There's also a hidden thorn weed there that can actually cause damage even if you uh, stopwatched on the previous screen. Then we're going to fight the boss. Back off here. Once I summon the Iron Shield spell, it's going to cause damage to him immediately. Grand Falloon just dies.
was trying to remember if there was anything that I needed to get while I was down here. But that was a negative. So I teleport back to the library. Now that the spike breaker mail is in our possession, gonna head back to the teleporter and make our journey to get the silver ring. We got the gold ring from beating the succubus. And once we get the silver ring, we can go to the clock tower and get the holy glasses, which are necessary in order to save Richter. You actually don't even need to go into the catacombs in order to save Richter glitchless. You can take you can You can exploit invincibility frames from the uh, potion or mana prism in order to skip past the spikes if you want, but it's actually quite difficult. And if you get hit once then you're pretty screwed. You just die. So really all you need is like a bunch of potions, the mist spell, and the jewel of open. You don't need to go down to the catacombs for the spike breaker mail if you don't want to. I can't remember which game it's in, but when you kill Grand Falloon slash Legion in one game, there's like a fetus at the center that dissolves and it's super messed up. I think that might have been Aria of Sorrow. So we're going to make another save here for the sake of safety. Now that we've teleported back to the top of the castle. To the castle keep. I'm trying to remember, did Harmony of Dissonance have just like two forms of Legion, or do you just like fight Legion two separate times? I think you fought him two separate times. Anyway, we're using the uh, Wolf Dash over here. Once again, quarter circle forward. Hello, quarter circle. Apparently you can't jump high enough in order to continue your Wolf Dash there. This is pretty easy though. You just have to drop down a few times from that teleporter and uh, then we can go up here. Uh, I forgot to pick up the uh, life max up whenever we came from Olrox's quarters earlier. Did you find Richter? I don't know if he's the one you're looking for, but I found a Belmont. Really? So he is here? But the one I saw was the enemy. He was the lord of this castle. Th that can't be true! You're wrong! I, I, I must go now! After the silver ring, we're going to make our way back over to the clock.
Really, I should have just teleported out as soon as I got the silver ring, but I guess I was kind of thinking on the fly there for some reason. I shouldn't have. Teleporting back over to Ulrox's quarters. I thought might have been a bit safer than trying to go back through Ulrox's quarters the other way. Trying to avoid those weapons as they spawn in. Alucard's drop is neutral as long as there isn't any input, so... Once Alucard falls off a ledge, he just goes straight down. Then we'll equip the gold and silver ring. So there is currently a debate in chat. How did Maria get past all those spikes earlier? She has spike breaking boots. How did she get past the mist gate? Well, I was going to make a joke about how Maria is liquid, but... Maybe Maria can turn to vape too. Alucard? That voice, Maria? I'm sorry, you were right. He has joined forces with the enemy. So it was a Belmont after all. But someone must be controlling him. Whatever we do, we can't harm Richter. But he must be stopped. I know. Well, here. Take these with you. What are these? If you wear these, you can see beyond evil illusions. Thank you. Tis best then if you pray for the soul of your friend. So lastly, we're going to farm up some more hearts. Because opportunities to farm hearts are not going to happen for a while. 
Actually, I'm sure they do. I just thought that doing it now would allow me some leeway to be lazy in finding ways to do so later. Actually, I could have very well just taken the teleporter from Ulrox's quarters, but whatever. This is just as well. I probably didn't actually even need to buy all those library cards. I guess having a familiar route that I could keep going back and forth with easy to defeat enemies is still safer than other options. Like dodging the Skellerangs, because at least over here I could pretty much guarantee that I could get out of here without using a stopwatch or using much MP. One more save. This is going to be our last save in the normal castle. I don't actually remember if I included killing Richter at the end of this video or not, but if I didn't, I'll just upload that as like its own thing just so I can upload what the bad ending looks like. I think at some point I'm probably going to have to try the uh, PSP version. I've been waiting for you. Answer me. Why is a Belmont planning the resurrection of Count Dracula? Count Dracula rises but once every century, and my role is over. If I can resurrect him, then the battle will last for eternity! If those are your true feelings, then so be it. So we gotta turn to Mist at the end of the uh, Holy Cross spell there. Magnificent, but now feel my unbridled wrath. Gotta kill the Shaft Orb before the Hydro Storm kills us. You've defeated me, but all is not yet lost. The resurrection of Count Dracula is at hand. <laughs> No, 
What have I done? Thank you, Alucard, for saving Richter. Alucard? The same Alucard who fought alongside my ancestor, Trevor Belmont? That was over 300 years ago. No time for small talk. Is the person who controlled you in that castle over there? Yes, I think so. Maria, take Richter and leave here. I'll finish this. All right. Good luck. I love how Alucard asks Richter, is the person who controlled you in that castle over there? Like, all right, son. Which one of these guys beat you up? All right, son, show me who stole your bike. There's a lot of heart and life ups in these upside down busts over here. Also, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty mad when I found out there was an inverted castle. Like, yay, I finally saved Richter. Now what? Are we gonna fight Dracula? Nope. You have to go through your asshole dad's castle again. Darkwing Bat was a little bit of a douchebag to me here. He kept flying high. Anytime he was about to hit me, I missed it out of it, though. I should have actually started with that first attack a little closer to the left, but... If he wasn't trolling and flying so low, then... I would have actually beaten them. Yeah, bad as easily. So a bit of careful flying around will get us around these guys. We have to be up on this side in order to get around this bomb knight. Fortunately, there's no spikes at the top of these, uh platforms here. I was a little worried about that before. Stay out of the bomb armor's attack radius. We can go this way and it's all gravy. Except not really because now there's these rooms with these cloaked knights. No Medusa heads yet though, fortunately. And we still got about Eh, 45 seconds worth of stopwatch. Which is more than enough time. We get rid of the Cloaked Knight here and uh, try to get the power-ups and exit just as quickly before another Cloaked Knight spawns in. Waste more of our MP. Stopwatch and slowly fly up. Stopwatch again. Fly up again. Jeez, there's a lot of these guys. There's like six of them. We're going to stopwatch before we fly in here, so to lock these guys in their original positions, and then just drop right down. 
Oh, I almost got Medusa headed there. Go all the way left here to get the Dragon Helm. Switch out the Holy Glasses. And I think that almost concludes our loadout until we get the Alucard Shield. The Dragon Helm lowers enemy defense, which causes you to do more damage. Then we'll make another segment here. Wow, I hope my audio didn't de didn't desync here. Oh, I guess I just ended that recording during a soft reset. That's why it blacked out. Okay, we're good. We Gucci. I think we have about half an hour of actual video game left. There is a Bible in that candle. Don't hit it. In order to save on hearts and MP, I just double jump where I can until the skeletons show up. Then I start to abuse the stopwatch. Actually, scratch that, I just missed up. Future Carsey should uh, just wait for past Carsey to do his thing a little more. Alucard testing out his dope new vape pen. Just wait until he gets fart-flavored vape juice. <laughs> Go in here to refill my MP. So I'm trying to get close to Frankenstein's monster here so that he will try to slam down on us with his hammer instead of use rollout. His rollout attack is significantly more annoying. And if you're not careful, you will actually game over on it. But uh, if you get hit with the uh, rollout attack, then just sit on one side of the room, uh, go into vape form, wait for him to hit a wall, and then untransform, and then just get ready to hit shield rod whenever he comes back on the screen.
couple more power-ups here. We should be done with the West Tower forever. On our way towards the reverse catacombs. So for these Nova Skeletons over here, I don't know if like the shockwave that comes out of their laser cannon can actually hit you, but the laser cannon does big damage. So it's best to stay under him as much as possible and then just use the shield rod. Should be enough. Again, going back here to recover MP. I want to have as much MP as I can to be able to use the Wolf Dash and Wing Smash. Not necessarily Wing Smash. Try not to use Wing Smash here, just due to the complexity of the inputs. And how easy it is to mess up and just run into an enemy. Thornweeds over here. Just gonna smack them. The reason I do that is not really for the sake of smacking them, but just so I can build my MP back up. It's so that I move slower. Because when I come over here, I need to be able to mist right through these guys. Because the Jack of Bones, the Large Gold Skulls, there's a lot of things that can hit you here. And it's very easy to mess up, so I say fuck it. I think this is the last uh, skull before the end of the screen. No Jack of Bones on that side. There's a couple of traps. Those floors are trapped. That floor is not, actually. But if you look closely at the uh, bottom of those floors there, you can see on the left and right, there's like a couple little gold things poking out. Those are little spike traps that'll come in and uh, scissor you. And now we're in the reverse caverns. The upside down section over here, there's a uh, there's a health max. I got the MP refill glitch here. You can see that see it in action. If you hit the J or L keys to rewind a little bit, you can actually see that the screen froze on the same frame that my MP was recovering. So I got free MP. stay at the ceiling as much as possible. As long as we're holding right, we can actually just fly over the Jack of Bones and we're okay. Or you can miss through it. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. But by flying over these guys, I think you use a little bit less MP. 
Also, the Jack of Bones take a while to actually turn around. Which version of the game has Vampire Killer? Saturn PSP? So we're gonna pop up here for just a moment. Stand right here and use the shield rod to kill the blue Venus weed. Then we're going to double jump up in here, transform into wolf. And uh, by pressing the backdash button while you're in wolf form, you can actually swim underwater and try to f go as high as possible so that we can get this mana prism. I get the mana prism here. It's it seems a little uh, seems a little unorthodox to be getting a mana prism here, but it's for a very good reason, I assure you. If we go too low, then we will actually trigger another Allura Urne, who will fire off a bunch of thorn weeds and shit and basically just fuck our shit up. Confined space here, Jack of Bones doesn't work out. You can freeze the Jack of Bones, but their projectiles actually do not freeze. So it's a bit of a troll. Man, I have got to play the Saturn version. If for no other reason than to check out like the extra areas and to play as Maria, because I never got to do that. Thing is, the Saturn version is really hard to capture because it does 240p 480i switching. The PlayStation version does not. I wonder if there's a hack to actually keep it forced in 240p at all times. I don't even know why. The Saturn version goes into 480i in menus. There's no reason for it to. I think Maria on PSP plays differently. There's a lot of extras in the other versions of the Castle Baby Something of the Night. So while we're in this room, we can actually dash forward we'll be okay. And then there's a waterfall that's falling upward. I don't know, I just love the everything you know is wrong sort of sense of humor about the Castlevania games. It's probably not actually meant to be funny, it's like, well, it's an upside down world, of course the waterfall is gonna fall upwards. But the first time I saw this room, I was like, really? Really? Final Fantasy IX changes resolution that many times? I need to investigate that. That could be a problem. But I figure whenever I do Final Fantasy IX recordings for my YouTube anyway, I'm probably just going to use the PC version. Any who's in. The cave trolls. Enough chat interaction for the moment. The cave trolls right here. I'm interacting with chat because this is a long stream. Uh, we just stay pretty far to the left so that these guys don't aggro. And then we can just keep using shield rod. That's the reason why I had the uh, mana prism was so that I could use the shield rod on these guys. And now we have the Alucard shield and Bob's your uncle. We can use Shield Rod once, and uh, the effect will last for as long as Elecard has MP. Or for as many as... Actually, I don't know how many hits. How many hits is it before the Shield Rod stops working? 
Like, how many times can the shield rod proc, or can the Alucard shield proc before you can no longer use it? And you have to cast shield rod again? Anyone in chat know? Oh, 90 seconds, okay. That's, so 90 seconds with shield out. 72 second timer. Thank you, Rom Scout. And it counts how many frames you have to shield out. So with the Alucard shield, it does 255 damage every time it ticks. So pretty much every frame that the shield makes contact with an enemy, it does damage. And on top of that, Alucard also gains invincibility frames. So you can just seriously hold the shield button through a bunch of enemies, but the longer you hold the shield button, the sooner the effect of the shield rod, or the shield rotted Alucard shield will run out. So you can't just like spam it through every room. You actually have to be a little judicious with it. But you can pretty much always get the drop on any enemy. And you'll be perfectly fine. That is a good question to ask Iga about someday. <laughs> it's like whether or not he and his team meant for the shield rod to be doing this much damage. So when the cave trolls stop and jump to attack, that's about when you want to run into them. When we sat down with him, he essentially said something like they wanted to focus on having a variety of content and having so much content to test and redesign thoroughly was unrealistic for their goal, for their release goal. That actually makes a lot of sense, Rom Scout. But I mean, Shield Rod is pretty much close to the end anyway, especially if you're progressing through the inverted castle in an upward fashion. So over here is our boy Doppelganger. We're gonna wait for him to move, and then we're going to freeze time, because if we freeze time too early, then Doppelganger will have invincibility frames and we will not be able to hit him with the Alucard shield. Now that this is done and we got the power-ups and whatnot, make our way to the inverse catacombs.
There's guy bonds over here, but uh, they go down in one shield rod or one Alucard shield. Precisely one Alucard shield. We can make another segment here for death. I actually took quite a few hits on death. I'm. I was. Uh, I was surprised. They could just accidentally take hits on death. But I don't know, despite all the, uh, despite the lack of time they had toward the end of release, they actually did a good job of balancing most of the game. Even if late game is very broken. So it's like, unless you know, like, all the tricks, you're probably not going to figure this stuff out. It's going to be pretty tough. Oh, you've made it this far. In the name of your father, cease this foolishness! Not while there's a breath in my body. Then for the master, I'll feast on your soul this night. I don't know, man. Having the fucking Grim Reaper under your command. One of the literal forces of life and death. What kind of a badass do you have to be to be able to command the respect and the power of the Grim Reaper? And the answer is a very, very big one. So I used the stopwatch to get past all those bats on the ceiling there. Did I ever get hit by the scythes after he died? Yes. Numerous times. Recasted Alucard's shield really quickly so that I could re so that I could re-equip Alucard's sword. I still have the DPS from Alucard Shield. It would allow me to save a little bit of uh, shield time. Shield use, rather. Which is fine, because the shield rod was actually, or the Alucard Shield was actually not hitting all of the angles that I wanted to hit on some of these enemies anyway. Here, we're going to be using the yellow card shield to get around these uh, witches, these salomes. And their infinite poos army. Over here, same as uh, same as in the regular castle, we're just gonna wolf dash through all this shit. And then we're gonna make our way over to Galamoth. All we have to do is get in one hit, and then we have full invincibility frames throughout this entire fight. Just keep holding the shield up, and Gallimoth is dead. So, 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 so are, you, are, you, uh, 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 are you feeling pretty pissed off yet that, that, that I was able to beat Gallimoth this fast? Ha ha.
yeah, young Carsey's ego probably would have been so bruised back then. Would have been like, oh man, that's cheating. So now we got the last relic in this area. We can't really use the library card to get back to, uh... I mean, I guess we could. But it's still going to be a bit quicker to just go this way instead of taking the library card all the way back to the normal castle because that's exactly where it'll take us back to the normal to the normal uninverted castle So I just decided to hoof it over to the teleporter here instead. Aw, look at the little kitty. It's got a witch's hat on it. Aw, they're so cute. No pooses were harmed during the making of this. need to fly downward very slowly. I don't think these guys propagate all that much, except for the light green one. He just grows. And we'll teleport back to the reverse castle keep. Let's save our game again. So the shield heals you, does 255 damage per tick, and a tick is like, oh man, this is what I was talking about earlier. I didn't realize that this was the segment. Okay, so the demon card was turned on, and the demon is like, die! <laughs> and if I if I if I hadn't been quick to react, that would have that would have ended this segment right here, and I would have had to retry the last 20 minutes over again. Demon was playing the long con. So every time we uh, reload from a save point, we got to make sure to put the shield rod spell back up. By using the stopwatch here, we can actually prevent the balloon pods from exploding. Just dash right through, full invincibility. Not worrying about a thing. Still pretty low on MP though. We don't got any more mana prisms. Just gotta be careful here. These uh Heavenly Snipers or whatever they're called. I actually don't remember their names. Gothic Sniper, I think. 
is what they're called. They'll spawn, and I think they do damage on entrance, but as long as you're as long as you're far enough left or far enough right, they won't hurt you, and the stopwatch will take effect once they are done spawning in. Sniper of Goth. That's that's what it was called. Sniper of Goth. Or Amalaric Sniper, depending on the Castlevania. Thank you, Neo Strikes. Also, in case you're wondering, yes, this is on a PlayStation 2. They're definitely called Sniper of Goth in this version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So it's probably the PSP release that they're called Amalaric Snipers. Beating Akamodon, whose presence in the Castlevania series I'm just not even sure of. It, it's like it's like at this point with all these bosses, they're just reusing a bunch of old 1950s, 1960s horror movie tropes. Oh jeez, I should have put up a stopwatch there before it, before the Karasuma in there started to attack. You spend more time on that fight waiting than fighting, basically. So we still have the uh, Spike Breaker equipped here. And that breaks these, and these guys are just going to leap right over you. The Spike Breaker mail just turns this room into a non-issue completely. Another mana prism. Pick that up for a little bit of extra mileage. The whole reason I activate this teleporter here is so that we could uh, come back here through reverse Ulrox's quarters to get back to Dracula. First, we gotta kill a few more bosses. Pick up maybe a couple more relics. Oh my god! <laughs> I messed up the inputs there so badly that I had to uh, exit before the giant Cthulhu ball. Just totally screwed me there. And uh, now we're a fart cloud. Alucard's been vaping butt hash. Right about here, just uh, kill fake Sypha, kill fake Trevor, and wait for fake Grant to drop down. That's the entire cast of Akumajo Densetsu, all dead.
just coming back through this way. We're in the chapel. I'm gonna fly over here. And then once we uh, go into the larger staircase area, we're just going to fart cloud our way right up. And just destroy everything in our way. It is not a good day to be the guys in this room. Fart's so bad, even the angels die. So once we uh, come out of here, we're gonna freeze. This guy is completely unaffected by our stopwatch, but whatever, screw him. We're just gonna transform back into a big green farty vape cloud anyway. Go into the save room to recover our MP again. Oh, exploitable. Man, fart's so bad, even this grody motherfucker is taking damage. Man, listen to him. He hates this he hates the smell of Alucard's butt. And vampires. They're fucking pretty and they sparkle. Probably to draw attention away from their assholes because that can't be healthy. use a stopwatch here if you want, but I think uh, having complete invincibility from Toxic Fart Cloud is uh, pretty wonderful. You just double jump here a bunch and transform back into vape form. Try to double jump as much as possible to conserve MP in this room where we're not really in that much danger. Here we're in quite a bit of danger because we got Ukobax and we also got Salem Witches here. So if I have bloody diarrhea, does that mean I'm a vampire? It might, or your insides are dying. No biggie. It means you should see a doctor. But I mean, if you're already undead, then seeing a doctor is kind of moot point. Do vampires have doctors too? Probably just priests or some shit. Some shit indeed. Oh. 
But uh, yeah, there's not really much to describe here. Just uh, going through this area to pick up s pick up the remainder of these health power-ups. And then we're going to teleport our way back to the final boss fight. Can you spare some plasma, brother? Back to Ulrox's quarters. And we're just gonna kinda slowly make our way over to Dracula. Slowly indeed. Well, this sure was a journey. Uh, if I don't get to say it later, thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for your support of my content. If you would be so willing, uh, please check out my Patreon. For $1 a month, you get early access to my videos. Also check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I stream there full time. Also shoutouts to Talik Zealot, Neo Strikes, and Elecard X60 for their uh help and advice on the game. You have done well in making it this far. I would expect no less from the son of our master. So you are the one who was controlling Belmont? Yes. I am the dark priest called Shaft. This world must be cleansed in the forge of chaos. Why did you make Belmont lord of this castle? For centuries, vampire hunters have defeated evil with holy power. But if two vampire hunters were to fight each other... But Belmont's power is supreme among vampire hunters. None other could defeat him. Exactly. That's why I removed him as a threat, by making him into lord of this castle. But your plan has failed. Has it indeed? We'll see what happens after I destroy your weak human side. And also shoutouts to Rom Scout for the uh, bit of extra side commentary coming from chat. Oh! No! You claim to love the darkness. Go then and dwell there for all eternity. But... but my goal is achieved!
Count Dracula has come to purify this corrupt world with the searing flames of chaos. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I'll leave you with the ending, and I am the wind. And see you all next video. Father. Well met, my son. It's been a long time. I was hoping we would not see each other again. I can't allow you to leave here, Father. You have ever been the ally of humans. Have you forgotten what they did to your mother? Think you I would forget such a thing? No, but neither do I seek revenge against them. Still uttering the same nonsense. No matter. Now is the time to put aside your weak human side and join me in remaking this world! Dracula, in the name of my mother, I will defeat you again! Behold my true form and despair! Go back whence you came! Trouble the soul of my mother no more! How? How? How is it that I've been so defeated? You have been doomed ever since you lost the ability to love. Ah, uh, uh, sarcasm. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the world and loses his own soul? Matthew 1626, I believe. Tell me, what, what were Lisa's last words? She said, do not hate humans. If you cannot live with them, then at least do them no harm for theirs is already a hard lot. She also said to tell you that she would love you for all of eternity. Lisa, forgive me. Farewell, my son. So you made it. Alucard, I'm glad you're all right. I'm sorry. It is my fault you had to fight your own father. Fear not. I had my own reasons for destroying him. It must have been painful for you. Indeed. But you must always remember that the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. I understand. Alucard, what will you do now? The blood that flows in my veins is cursed. T'would be best for this world if I were to disappear forever. I see. Farewell, then. We'll not meet again. Alucard... Don't you want to go after him, Maria? No. It's best this way. I can't ease his torment. Someday, perhaps, we will meet again. And on that day, maybe. I see. Let's go. Everyone's waiting for us. Yes. Let's get out of here.
在。